welcome to the Motorsport Coaching Podcast, sponsored by Motivate Training and Management. This is a podcast where we talk to drivers and industry experts to help you maximize your performances on and off the track. Let's get started with today's show. and welcome to episode 20 of the Motorsport Coaching Podcast. I am your host, Belinda Risley, and today I'm very excited to be joined by our guest, Miss Romy Mayer. Those who don't know, Romy is a data and performance engineer at Red Bull Holding Racing Team, and she works at Jamie Winkup. Originally from Germany, she studied automotive engineering, and she's been working with the DTM team of Mercedes for five years before relocating to Australia in 2015. Romy is also an ambassador of Dare to Be Different, which was launched in April of this year in Australia. Do you know what Dare to Be Different is? Well, it is a non-profit organisation whose primary objective is aimed at increasing the participation of women in all forms of motor racing. So please help me welcome Romy to the show. All right, so welcome to the show, Romy. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. I know I say that every episode, but I really am. Um, just it's just amazing everything you've achieved so far in your career. Can you tell us a little bit about it? How did you get started? Um, what's really your journey to today? Yeah, so originally I'm from Germany. I grew up um, in the south part of Germany. It's an it's a area where there's a lot of car makers. So since I'm small, I'm, I'm grown up in the industry, but I don't have any motorsport background. Um, when I finished high school, I actually had no idea what I wanted to do. And I was quite good in math and physics, but the whole engineering field that was a bit intimidating or a bit scary to me. I thought it's only about um, big tools, machines, and only men work there. So yeah. I didn't quite push into that. I uh, wasn't really sure if, if that's really what, what I want to do. Yes. But um, yeah, my dad, he's, um, he's a really like a technical person. He always uh, loved it that I had good grades in math and physics. So um, I ended up doing an internship and then I found myself that I really want to pursue engineering as a study at a uni. Yeah. And as I'm, like I said, I'm grown up in an area where automotive and car makers, Porsche, Mercedes, they're all around it. So... I had uh, like the dads of my friends, some of them were working for Mercedes and stuff. So I found that already fascinating. So I actually started to study um, automotive engineering, which is like um, mechanical engineering, but it's already specialized in, in car manufacturing or car design. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, I couldn't imagine a world like living up with these places just around the corner from my house. <laughs> Um, as you now know, living here, um, the size of like Europe and, and the size of Australia is completely different. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, so um, you've got that interest from your dad. Um, where, where else have you worked? So how, how did you end up here in Australia? Uh, so, yes, I actually, while I was studying automotive engineering, I wasn't sure i haven't really had that interest in motorsport that i thought like oh that's me that's my job that's what i want to do only during my studies i joined um the formula saa team of my uni which is um which is kind of a small race team where students design build and race a race car and yeah meet, uh, with other university teams yeah. and that's when i first experienced any kind of motorsport like hand-on obviously in germany formula one is really big there's a lot of german race drivers in there so it was uh, on tv sundays at my parents place but yeah. it was pretty far away from me as i didn't know anyone who worked in motorsport so that was kind of the first experience on motorsport and then i'm like oh yeah that's actually even better than just being a designer for a road car which you design something and then in uh, three years time it's on, on the road or on the streets because obviously in, a, in this in the car manufacturer everything is a little bit slower than in a race team because you make decisions on a race car and then race the next day 
Um, so that was first when, when I really thought like I want to work in motorsports. And then, then um, after my uni, I, I got a job with HWA as um, data engineer for the Mercedes DTM team. And um, yeah, that was already for me a really big step. And I, I, I loved that job and I grew a lot because I didn't have much experience. So over five years, I developed all kind of motorsport engineering skills and they gave me a lot of opportunity to grow there as well. And then after five years, I felt really I, I want a change as well as that one was my first job and I didn't have any other experience and other race cars. So I felt I need to change a bit to gain um, more experience and I wanted still to work in a um, in world-class motorsport that for me the only opportunity or what I thought um, other opportunity then in Germany would be in, in the UK or Australia and with the supercars and um, yeah and then I went for Australia in the end. <laughs> yeah well welcome we're very glad that you came here. Are, yeah. you, enjoying, are you enjoying your time here? Yeah, I, I really, I really like Australia. I see myself here for a very long time. <laughs> How long have you been here now for? Yeah, um, I came over in 2015. So that was, um, I applied for a job because that was the year when um, Red Bull, at that time it was Red Bull Racing Team, they announced that they go from two to three race cars the next year. And then I thought, Oh, there might be another engineer then or a few more. <laughs> so I just applied and um and it worked all out and then three months later I was in Australia. Wow. And do you have any family here or did you just pack your bag and come out? Did your family come with you or? Uh, no, I came by myself. Yeah, I actually didn't know anyone. I came with <laughs> a, a suitcase and a surfboard bag and that was it pretty much. <laughs> so oh. I was from zero here again. It was a really exciting time. I enjoyed that journey as well. Oh, wow. How exciting <laughs> and daunting. <laughs> yeah. So I guess one of the benefits of going to Red Bull is that you would have had the friendship of Jess Dane. How, has she really helped you acclimatise to Australia and to the team? And what's it like working with her and the team as well? Yeah, the, the whole team were amazing when I first came. It felt really like a family. Like I said, I didn't know anyone in Australia. And they were so welcoming and it felt I have a group of friends right away. And it still is. It's a triple A. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a workplace. It's a big family, to be honest. And um, yeah, having Chess in the team, obviously she's been there quite a, quite a while. And uh, um, it's amazing. She's really strong person and inspiring. She always focuses and pushes to new ideas. And... Uh, and you can see that she's the daughter of Adi. She is really like focusing on, on her work and like moving the whole team forward. Oh, that's really good that you've had that support. And it's great to hear that everybody's a big family, <laughs> contrary to us, conjecture to what you see on TV. So that's <laughs> really good to see. And so have you ever competed yourself? I've never been in like a proper race series. Like, Driving. Yeah. I once actually had the opportunity to drive in a Lotus Elise on, on the um, Red Bull Ring in Austria. Yeah. There was a, a race series called Lotus Ladies Cup, which actually oh, nice. was women racing in there. Yep. And uh, they were a, as a support category for the DTM when I was there. So I was in contact and I saw them around. And then they approached me because uh, one of the drivers couldn't attend one meeting. Mm -hmm. and, um, so they needed an, a, another driver just for one meeting. And then they asked me if I want to try. And I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah. And um, so I had a race weekend with them. And it was so exciting. It was, I was actually in the beginning scary because obviously I knew this racetrack from working on, yeah. on that racetrack, but not on the set in that car. So obviously I was pretty slow because all these women, they were partying and racing since they, since they were kids. I was like a second off the pace, but it was so much fun. And also I learned a lot, especially um, then, yeah, seeing the whole thing from the other side, like analyzing my own data and stuff. So that, that was pretty exciting. But yeah, that was pretty much the only time I was competing in a race car. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sounds lots of fun though. Yeah. Um, and what are some of the differences between like international racing to V8 supercars? Um, the teams are much bigger. Like yep. in the, even though here in Australia, I'm working with one of the bigger teams, but uh, the Mercedes team or DTM, they have a lot of people not only traveling, but also back at the factory. There's a whole development um, department with lots of designers, but also they have an engine development department and it's the whole um, company is uh, more than 200 people. So that's wow. way more than any other team in Australia. That's, that's the biggest difference. And then because of that and because the, each person has a much smaller work field where they work, but they're a bit more specialized compared to here. Um, like I do everything sometimes. I mean, <laughs> so we, I'm doing not only um, engineering, we do design, I do electrical stuff. I have, you do the setup, the set down, <laughs> everything. <laughs> You're a jack of all trades here. Yeah. <laughs> and so, what does your weekend at a racetrack involve? What oh, does it look like? When yeah. does your when does your I guess work <laughs> start? I'm sure you're working all the time, but at a race weekend, is it Thursday, Friday? Yeah, usually you should, depends a bit which track and if it's straight track overseas or whatever. But usually we arrive on a Thursday, and Thursday for us is our setup day. So we we set up our workspace because obviously when we come to the racetrack. It doesn't, you won't see it on TV, but there's not much there. there. You need to set up your workspace in your garage and need to make sure that all your system works. And um, there's a lot of checks happening, not only on the car, but also on all the systems behind it. And then we have meetings with the team because that's the first time we come all together, the engineers and the drivers. And so we plan out the whole weekend. And then we go with an important part on Thursday is usually the track walk. So the engineers and the race drivers, they walk um, the track and, and talk about um, all each corner and how the car behaved yes, uh, last year and um, what was our strength and our weaknesses. So is so it that's the feedback that you're giving to the drivers or they're giving to you? That's kind of a, a communication. Yeah, get, yeah, it's an open talk of communication because we know a lot what from the data because before we go to the racetrack, you looked at the data from last year and all your notes and your changes you made throughout the weekend. But then the driver, he knows as well what, what how it was last year. So it's kind of just like bringing all the memories back and, Yep. And visualizing where we were and where we need to improve and that's pretty that's uh, the Thursday so it, that's just like getting getting into the track and getting started so usually on Thursday we we don't run the car so that's just um settling in and then um, yeah Friday is the first time we usually go out on the track we have practice sessions Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when we um testing our setup options. So same before we come to the racetrack, we we think what the car would like on each racetrack and what we need to improve, and then we test the different options. Mm -hmm. And you need a quality car and a race car, so you do different testing for each settings. Like the quality car usually is one or two laps, and the race car needs to last. 70 laps or 160 depending which race track you are <laughs> wow yeah so you have to have a lot of data there around the, the aspects of the car when it's fastest to put that that setting on it to take it off for the race is there much change from qualifying to a say a 170 lap race oh yeah it's, pretty, it's quite different like like i said it's qualifying you need a car it needs to be fast in one lap and it needs to be fast right from the beginning the lap starts and then in the race, it's focused on that it, for example, that you have tires which last the whole spin, which you obviously you don't need to worry about in quality. So it's, um, yeah, it's two different challenges. <laughs> so that's on Saturday. And then I look on Sunday. And, and how does it work with a co driver and having that extra set of data to analyze? Yeah, obviously, we just finished the enduro season with the co drivers, which is usually, yeah, it's always exciting to have another driver there because it's just, another factor in the whole thing so even in a practice session you also work with the co-driver and you have even more data to analyze and um yeah during the race that's 
it's not only the strategy you need to run to see where your competitors are and what they're doing, how good they are and how they work with the fuel strategy, but you also need to plan your strategy with your co-driver. There's a minimum lapse required for each co-driver and you need to make a strategy to fit that in your race, yeah, perfectly, like that, that it works around the fuel, the tires and all that. And is that your call in the team, Romy, to say fuel now, come in on this lap? Um, I, I, yes, I do the fuel the strategy. Yep. Our, the main race engineer, which for me is, I work with David Couchy, and he talks to the driver directly. So he does all the driver communication. And then we have um, in our team, me and him, we do the strategy together. So I give him feedback on all the data because I have more data related from the car than he has in the front. So I know exactly when the car runs out of fuel and tell him, oh, you have two more laps. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so and it's always, yeah, it's so much data. So you need to have another person that you don't, um, you might not, think of something because you focus too much on 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 tires and then this pops up so it's good to have obviously two people doing the strategy and some more input than just one person has and so do you work across the whole three cars or just the third car on the race weekend i work only on jamie wincup's car yep so operate or let's say on each session i only work on jamie's car but Mm -hmm. to analyze all the data before or after a session or in the evening I do all three cars. Like we have um, data where we need to look at that all the sensors are working and as well all the performance. And it's good to look at all three cars to see where they're sitting and which car is better in which corner, for example, or what are the strengths of each car to, just to bring it all together. And he said, is that what you do after they come in, say from qualifying before race one? thinking if there's like a race on Saturday, that, that you'll analyze that and then provide some of the race setup recommendations. Yeah. And then yeah. after race one, you go back and analyze it again, ready for race two. Yeah, exactly. So the first step is usually making sure that the whole car, the vitals are working. So that's all the systems in the car, the engine, the gearbox, all the, so have the right pressure and the right temperature. That's that's the first step. What we do after a session, and then obviously making sure that nothing stands out or can break in the next session. And then the next step is to analyze the performance, to look um, where were our strengths and our weaknesses, and where we need to get better for the next day. And yeah, that's the, the, that's the the work we do in the evenings or after each session. And even after Sunday night, or do you wait until Monday to do a debrief? <laughs> you usually have a debrief on Monday. But yep. Yeah. Sometimes you're even curious to see uh, what happened there. Why were we? So sometimes it really is like that. So you want to look at the data as fast as you can. And and with, we have telemetry data, so we do have a lot of channels coming across live to us at the back of the garage. Mm -hmm. So we can see. A lot of things like especially temperature and pressures which which are related to the to uh, how the car is performing out there um it needs to be analyzed right away to make sure nothing goes wrong and especially some um, of the events are a fast turnaround like bathurst to the gold coast pretty much gold coast to New Zealand, I can't say that word, Puakoi, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is. Um, but there's not much turnaround time. So you'd be wanting, obviously, to get that data quite quickly back to the guys. Yeah, exactly. So um, that's, even even you have a weekend, even if you win or you have a weekend where you crash, you still go back to the workshop and analyse the whole weekend. You basically start back from the first day where you had your first session and, and discuss with all the other engineers how you ended up racing that setup in the, in the race car in the end and all errors, all problems arise and you always work on how we can um, stop them for the next time that they don't occur anymore. It's, it's a really good process at Triple Eight and um, even sometimes it's hard because you just want to forget and go to the next race. But yeah. Uh, it's really good that you understand what went wrong. Do not make those 
Okay. Yeah, and of course, our Dave, we want to answers and other people as well as to what went wrong or what went right. Yes, exactly. When, when they didn't think, like when, when I say what went right, when they didn't think they were going to have a win, and then all of a sudden they do have a win. It is also really important to analyze what went right because only that makes you strong. Like when you know why you were so strong and faster than the others, then you only then you can be strong again. Because if you just I don't really know why, then the next time you won't be strong. <laughs> yeah. And so what happens, um, you said sometimes a debrief do happen on Monday. What do you do during the week? Um, obviously, you're away 16 weekends a year um, and then a couple of test days or test weekends. I'm not quite sure exactly how many, maybe three or four. Yeah. So half a year, you're pretty much away. So what, what work do you do during the actual week? Is it with the team? Is it just more data analysis? Are you working one-on-one -on -one with a certain person? Or tell us about what happens on your day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah, it's, it's actually never an uh, everyday job, so it changes almost every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, it involves some work at the car, like making sure all the sensors still working, calibrating the sensors, programming all the computers in the car that's happening on the car, and that happened the week leading up to the race before the car gets passed into the truck. And then there's a lot of analyzing of the data from last year and last event. Um, just preparing for the next uh, race weekend and that happens in our engineering group. You, everyone looks at the data themselves but then you sit together and put it all on the table and see um, where we gonna go with our setup, what the strategy plan and uh, so it's both. there's a lot of data analyzing on the laptop but also um, work some work on the car and make sure the car is ready for the next race. <laughs> and so you you obviously sound really, really busy, Romy. Do you actually have any days off? <laughs> yeah, there's some days off. Like <laughs> the weekends when we're not racing, usually off. Especially yeah. when the truck leaves um, that weekend already because it's a, a race far away, like Bird or Darwin, which um, is pretty far from us based in Bristol. So then they usually leave um, Friday or Saturday the week before. And then the weekend is off. And usually we get the day after the race weekend um, off as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it also depends on the turnaround time. Like this week and this last weekend when we had a crash in Gold Coast and then the cars need to be ready again on Friday if we were going to New Zealand and there was no day off. But um, usually we have the Monday off where you can just relax a bit and, and you need it. It's, it's even, even the race weekend goes smooth and you have still your sleeping hours but it's quite exhausting especially when you get a rest you really feel how exhausting the race weekend was yeah i can imagine especially coming off bathurst as well um <laughs> a couple of weeks ago then going straight into the gold coast and i know that 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 was something one of the reasons that they were looking at changing the calendar in 2019 so it wasn't as hard on the, the actual race teams because everyone is tired and fatigued at this time of the year um but it's only a little bit personal about you right I mean, so what do you like to do on, on your days off so do you have like any other interests or hobbies or are you one still to be analyzing data on your day off <laughs> yeah, actually, actually i try to do something totally opposite that I, I like to be outside in the nature especially coming from germany i love the warm weather and the beach so I, I love to surf. I'm always in the ocean when I can. And then obviously the time when I'm off, I like to spend time with my partner and with friends because um, there's not that much time to spend um, with, yeah, uh, with these people when, you, when you're on a race trip so much. Yeah, of course, it's hard. As I said, like you're away pretty much like half the year. So it's important to catch up with them. Um, family and friends and, and what's important to you on those days of? Yeah, I try to get away from, from the racing life. Like I have most of my friends who are not involved in motorsports, so they, they, talk, they have totally different topics to talk about. <laughs> they usually talk about during the week. So they talk about the ocean fishing, camping, and it's really good as well because then it's really easy to switch off and you're your mind is totally somewhere different and it's, it's really refreshing. So I like to have these two worlds. 
<laughs> well, that kind of rolls in well to, to our next question. We're saying, obviously, you're very passionate about what you do. Do uh, what's what do you love about your career and the path that you've had so far, and really the path that you can continue to grow on? Yeah. Um, one thing that I'm, I'm really proud of, and what I really like, is that I that I that I came from a family or from somewhere with no background in motorsport like and then I did I really decided I won't want to have a job job in motorsport I want to have a job what I have on tv and then I kind of made my way there and I never had someone to give me a job so I always applied for each internship each job like on the formal way and that's something what makes me really proud that I that I never I never gave up. I always found a different way, even if I didn't work the first time or the third way, which I thought it might work out. So that's a that's a thing which I really like about my journey, like to see the way I get to where I am at the moment. And then, yeah, yeah I still can't, can't believe that I have the job I once watched on TV and thought, I, oh, that would be amazing to be an engineer like that. So and, and that's what I like most. Exactly. And that's why I was wanting to have you as a guest as I saying to you before off air, a lot of people aspire to be a data engineer, let alone for triple eight engineering. Um, so um, I think you're definitely living a lot of people's dreams out there. So again, well done on your career to date. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, but in saying that, obviously, with all the good, there does come some bad. And what are some of the biggest challenges um, that you've faced? Obviously, moving country <laughs> would have been one of them, um, leaving family and friends. Uh, what are the, some of the other things that that you've occurred? Um, yeah, like yeah, like you just said, that's that's the biggest thing. Um, to combine your job, your love, and you put all your passion in, but then also, um, starting a new life in a new country where you don't have any friends, and then giving making friends and establishing a friendship, a relationship, and and making all that um like work. So that's, that's a hard thing in, when you work in motorsport. You do need to make sacrifice. And you still have really good friends at home back in Germany. And, and they want to see me more than I can. And uh, <laughs> it's not always easy. <laughs> but um, yeah, when it comes to the job itself, sometimes, yeah, the hard thing is um, when, you, when you had a, a disappointing weekend on the racetrack and then just picking yourself up and focusing on the next one, analyzing what went wrong. It can be challenging because sometimes you just want to put it aside, but you still uh, need to analyze it and then just push forward. Even you sometimes feel uh, it's going to get away or something. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's the, the perseverance that's uh, sometimes challenging. Yeah. And have your family been out uh, many times to see you work? Um, yeah, my mum, she came already twice, she left Australia, she went to the race right track and back in Germany they always came to visit to the race track, they, they find it really exciting as well. Oh, that's lovely. And what are some of the experiences, um, good or bad, that you've encountered working in a male dominant industry? Um, so, even in my studies, um, there was in my when I graduated the year I graduated I was just me as a female so I was kind of used from uni to be the, one of the few females in in the in the workspace so um but it's always hard when you start a new job or an internship or at uni as well that um get accepted and you need to prove yourself like you need to proof that you're as good as the boys for mm -hmm. sure or even a bit better yeah. and, you, and that's why you're always in the spotlight so good or bad if you if you make errors or mistakes what, what everyone does but you it's still highlighted a bit more but on the other side it's as well highlighted when you do something really good because you stand out as well in, in good sides and bad sides so um yeah that's what i experienced but it's it's a journey as well it's it's how it is and, and you need to take the good parts and you do need to deal with the not so good parts as well. <laughs> of course, and that's the same in any industry, not just in this one. Um, is there, or do you see more female um, workers, competitors, drivers um, in overseas, like in Europe and stuff? 
similar way. Well, female in motorsport, definitely they are there. It's just we need to highlight them a bit more and so that especially young girls they can look up to other women and they they because a lot of times you just see men there and but there are a lot of women and they have really cool jobs in all fields in motorsport. And it's not I haven't seen a big change yet. It's slow. Yeah. But I think in the for the especially for the next generation it will definitely change because there's so many more girls in all the sem um unis and um in all the in the mass and physics there, there are more and more girls coming so i def I have, I have big hopes and it. definitely in australia because didn't we just win the school challenge exactly yeah we won the school stem challenge and i and i believe like one of the ladies that was in that um she's been there for five years so oh, nice. no doubt we'll be seeing her around mm -hmm. the track one time um, so you are talking about um, inspiring young females and currently you're an ambassador for Dare to be Different. So for those that don't know what that program's about, Romy, can you just share with us, you know, what is it, who's it targeted for and, and what, what does it do? Yeah, so um, Dare to be Different was um, founded in 2016 in the UK um, by Susie Wolf, the former race driver, yep. and her idea was to inspire, connect, and also show that there are females in motorsports. And it's not only um, for race drivers, but it's for all kind of jobs in motorsport. We want to show young girls all the opportunities they have and, and show it within women who already work in the field. So um, in the beginning of this year, we launched uh, to be different in Australia. And since then we had to there to be different days where we um, invite girls from the age from eight to ten, yeah, um, to come and spend a day where they do different kind of activities and challenges, which um, showcase jobs in the motorsport industry. So we have a simulator, a STEM challenge. They do a media workshop, a pit stop challenge. So they just get a feeling for the environment and that they and see what they like, they can experience a little bit how everything works and we just show them what it's like to be in motorsport. Oh, fantastic. And as you mentioned, you've already done two, so one in Melbourne and one in Brisbane. And what was the general feedback from those 60 kids that participated? Yeah, it, it's amazing. Like they, you just see like the kids smiling the whole day and we get so nice feedback from them. Like they write us letters that it was, such an inspiring day for them and they really look up to what we're doing and um, they want to be now in motorsports and it, you really see that you can make an influence on them in just one day and uh, that, that's so nice to, to get that feedback and even get to show them all the opportunities because when I was that age, like I said, I hadn't really, especially that young age, I had no idea what I want to do or even with 15, didn't really know what kind of job in their motorsport so it's just short, giving them like the open door for all the opportunities and it's, it's been pretty amazing can can wait for more events to come yeah and, and is that the goal to to run out more or is it or are they just going to do two a year or no we have the next one is coming on the 22nd of november in the newcastle that's around the supercar race that's on the thursday Yep. So um, that would be a similar event like we had um, in Brisbane or in Melbourne. So schools or even in individual girls can um, apply to join. And that we, that you can do on the There To Be Different website. And uh, um, so yeah, they can spend the day there. And then the next one after will probably be the one next year uh, within the Formula One race. That, Melbourne. Of course, we've got to have one at the Formula One. <laughs> yeah, that's when it all started this year. And obviously, you've been to the Formula Ones in Melbourne. Yeah, because we raced there as well. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> what am I thinking? Sorry. We are support category for them. Right. <laughs> I am blonde, and it is late at night. So. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, oh, it's even fun. It's a really exciting event to have the Formula One cars around us. I might just delete that question. 
Um, so, Romy, um, you're obviously very young. You've achieved a lot in your life so far today. What's next for you? What's your ultimate goal? Well, I don't have an ultimate goal. I really like the journey and like to develop what's out there. Like, um, I'm always, um, I want to see what I can learn, where I need to improve myself, my skills. I definitely want to stay in Australian motorsport. Like, I feel really home here. But, like, you know, the motorsport industry, even in Australia, is, is so big. So, I'm keen to take more responsibility and make decisions uh, with some um, influential race a bit more. And, um, yeah, we'll see how, where we go. Fantastic. Well, I can't wait to see where you end up next or, and, or how your um, career progresses. Yeah, I'm uh, part of the journey. <laughs> yeah, so you should be. Um, and so, Robert, do you have any advice for anyone wanting to get into engineering? Like, can you recommend any courses or resources or, yeah, basically people, that was the main question people were asking, like, mm -hmm. how do we get into to engineering? Yeah, like, um, try to, what I say, try to get any, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, any kind of experience in any kind of field is valid. Like, try to approach small motorsport team if you can help out for a weekend just to see how, how it is to work on a race, on a race, on a race track, if you like it or not. And you will kind of find your way um, in which direction you want to go. And then in schools, in uni, they have a lot of programs there nowadays, the Formula One in schools where they build small Formula or small race cars. Then there's the Formula SA, which I joined at my uni that time. They're pretty good and even stuff like that to be different, just to give you give you an idea of what's out there. And, and the courses are math and physics and engineering when you want to be an engineer, obviously, and it's, it is hard work, it's not always easy, and it's not always as exciting as it looks on TV. There's a lot of hard work behind, and there's, um, it's not a straight path going to be a race engineer. It's not just straight up there. There might be a detour, so you might need to do a job which you don't like for a while, but there's small steps on the way, and it gives you experience, and, you know, all kind of feel, and that's, that's the main thing to find out um, what you're to where you do that way you need to improve and um, slowly you get there. And as you know, I opened up um, to Facebook and said, does anyone have any questions? Let us know. So I'm just going to go through some questions that people had some interest in. So Jordan has asked, um, could you ask what qualifications do you need? Oh. Be a data and performance engineer? Was that a question? Yep. Yep. Yeah, um, an engineering degree um, obviously helps. Like, um, and then you need to be good with math and physics. Like, you need to analyze data, be um, sharp in decisions, what you see from data, and, um, and work within a team. That's a big thing. Sometimes People forget that, like when you need to be a good engineer, but you also need to communicate very well because you have a big team around. Not only engineers, you work with mechanics, with uh, tire guys, and the race driver, obviously as well. Fantastic. <laughs> um, and so um, Alex has asked, how often Robbie works with a driver to use the data during a race, and who has been her favorite driver to work with? Um, so, um, so we obviously work with the driver all the time within a session because then we have opportunity to show him his driving compared to our other two drivers. So um, we do that during the session, but also after the session. And within a race, uh, we do see driving style because we have um, the data live coming across and we can correct the driver in some some ways um but it's um especially when the condition change that's that's the most thing when we give him feedback on his driving like when it's um 
starting to rain or drying up and we see the other driver takes a different line, that's kind of when we need to give him feedback on the race. And uh, yeah, my favorite driver, it's hard. Like I work actually with, I like to work with all the, I like all the race drivers I work with, most of them. I didn't, it's always, um, it's just me asking, oh, who's your favorite friend? <laughs> It'd be like trying to pick your favorite child, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, it's sometimes harder when it, back in Germany, I worked a lot with uh, younger drivers. Yeah. Much more younger drivers. They are sometimes more difficult because they just step into their career. They're insecure sometimes. They have pressure that they need to perform. So sometimes it can be hard to um, get messages across or trying to talk the same language to them. Like, but then, when you work with more experienced driver, it's, it is kind of a, a relationship which you establish and it's, it's a, it trust. a, it's a yeah, yeah. yeah, and you need a lot of trust, wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly, like both ways. Yeah, so building, building up those relationships are really yeah. important in success for both parties. Exactly, yeah. The driver needs to trust us that we give him a good car which doesn't break down and we need to trust the driver that he gives us good feedback on the car so we can change it the way. Accordingly, and of course that, that, that comes back to the whole communication. Um, yeah. Yeah, how everybody communicates. All right, well, I think we've kind of answered this one, but Eddie's asked, how did you get into the role? What was your path? So we talked about growing like, from your dad, going to uni and then applying for internships mm -hmm. and then getting yeah, it, it wasn't a straight path it wasn't that like that one way so and, and there is in motorsport there are so many ways to to become your, the person you want to be like a race engineer or, or a data engineer it's not never a straight path so she can follow them <laughs> no, nothing's ever that easy, is it? Like, I can tell you, like, well, no, I'm just rattling off. Like, I did this, and you're like, no, no, not really. Like, I had to. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that took you to get to the position that you're in. So. Yeah. Um, and last, Jack has asked, um, how, how do you create contacts? Do you feel this role is around about networking? Um, he's right. How to, how to create contacts? Have tried so hard to get my name out. Does she have any advice to get your foot in the door? Yeah, a little bit like I mentioned before, try to approach smaller race teams first. They, a lot of them sometimes look for people to help out. And that's, that's the way when you want to get a step into motorsports. Um, just um, talking to smaller race team, helping them out, um, yeah, attending race events, which aren't like the supercars where you, what, maybe an event where it's more easier to approach teams and gaining any kind of experience and building a network there I think helps a lot. Um, yeah, I think that's the hardest thing in Australia. Like it, we are quite limited, although we do have lots of categories, mm -hmm. um, you know, gets, trying to just to get that foot in the door, I guess everyone's trying, trying to achieve that. Yeah, that's, that's the same. And I, to be honest, I felt the same when I was in that position. Like that's why I support uh, like a program like that to be different because I would like to open the doors, make it easier for the next generation and show them what kind of jobs are there, what do you need to do to get there, to be able to do the jobs. And yeah, it's important to show the next generation what, need to, what you need to have to do these jobs. Yeah, I think so. And it, I think it's all about being passionate as well, isn't it? So if, if, you, can, if you can prove to a team that you're passionate, um, sometimes even regardless of qualification, uh, but if that you really want to be there, yeah. you'll probably just be willing to give you a chance. And even if it might just be a one-off weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, motor, in motorsports, that's, that's a big thing. Being motivated, work hard, being passionate, that um, gets you quite far, I believe. Mean, obviously, you need to have the skills, but um, only skills won't get you anywhere, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and again, it's like a driver. You just can't have a driving ability. Um, you need to have kind of like a, the whole package to move forward in this sport. Mm, exactly, yeah. Well, Remy, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. I know you've been flat. It's really exciting. <laughs> 
It has been. It has been. And I hope to have you on again on your next journey or in a year's time just to see how everything's going on at Triple Eight. Yeah. Um, as you know, my last question is always, what's your favourite racetrack? It doesn't have to be in Australia. Obviously, um, you've been around the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and my favourite racetrack is the Red Bull Ring, the Red Bull Ring in Spielberg, so in Austria, because it's, it's um, kind of like a little bit like fastest, just the elevation, yeah. and it's like set into the mountains. So it's really a fascinating track. I really like that track. Well, I decided after the weekend that the Gold Coast is my favourite track, just for the actual, you know, yeah. It is, it is actually, when I thought about it, I think the Gold Coast race is my favourite event. Yeah. Just because of the atmosphere. And it's also the first race event after after the cold weekends in Bathurst <laughs> and Sandown. And it's always like that. Each year, it's like the first summer event. So it gets always this summer feeling. Um, so I think it's my favorite event. But when it comes to the racetrack itself, I like the Spielberg race a lot. Oh, it sounds great. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah. Anyway, Roy, thanks again. I'll let you get to bed. I know you've got an early start in the morning. I appreciate your time. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you soon. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> Well, thanks everyone for listening to this week's show. I really hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. Now, remember all the show notes with the links and the specials mentioned in today's show are available over at motivatetraining.com.au. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you could head to iTunes or Stitcher, type in Motorsport Coaching, subscribe and leave us a review. Each week, I'll read them out and you'll go into monthly draw to win a fantastic prize. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at motivatetraining.com.au or head over to our Facebook page at motivate to Tea. Until next time, take care.